What is MQA? Well, this question comes from Ted in Ojai, California. Beautiful part just along the 101 freeway uh, down there where I used to live. What exactly is MQA and does it make digital media sound better? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. I don't normally avoid the uh, the can of worms, do I? I? MQA stands for Master Quality Assured or Assurance. And it was started by um, uh, some, some people who uh, used to run Meridian. Uh, Bob Stewart, uh, I don't remember what his uh, partner in this, what his name is, but some extremely bright people. Bob Stewart is one of the most knowledgeable, bright people I know in our industry. Super nice guy. I, I really like Bob a lot. He's a good guy. Um, Bob's done some, some really terrific things. And we, as a company, support MQA because our customers have asked for it. And we're not particularly big fans. I've said this before. I don't particularly like what MQA does. I don't like how it affects the music. But let's talk about what it is, because I don't think you actually asked much of an opinion, did you? Oh yeah, does it make it sound better? Well then, the floodgates are open. <laughs> Essentially, MQA, uh, from, from one point of view, my point of view, is it is a way of compressing high, high, high resolution music into a smaller space so it can be transmitted easier over the network or a network or the internet. So you can have files that go up to say 192 kilohertz, even higher, but they stream at CD quality. And when you unfold these files, you're back up to 192. Now, part of the way this works is that it is losing information at the, at the higher sample rates that they feel is unnecessary and their arguments are pretty solid actually. We'll, we'll get into that in a second and I'm not going to get into a big philosophical thing but the other part of it just to answer your question it, because it more refers to the name it isn't so much of a compression system I think they would rather have you think of it as this master quality assured uh, idea. And that is where they use a reverse algorithm to how the music was recorded. So when, when we record music and we make it digital, we use what's called an analog to digital converter, an ADC. So this, this is analog. These, these microphones back here will pick up analog sounds, the sound of my voice, and they, and that's the, the analog of my voice, and it's in a continuous stream of changes in voltage. Now, if we want to convert that into something a computer can understand, then, oh, and we can transmit over the internet, which is a way to share computer files, then we have to convert it using this analog to digital converter. And in that conversion process, it changes the sound to sound like that ADC. There's no such thing as a perfect ADC. Every ADC on the planet will change the sound somewhat, some more, some less. And then on the opposite side of it is a digital to analog converter, a DAC. And we go from analog to digital converter. We do whatever we want to with the digital data and then we convert that digital data into analog data. So ADC in, DAC out. That makes sense? And each DAC has its own sound. So the idea behind MQA was like if we could quantify the sound of an ADC and then the sound of a DAC and put the reverse of those sounds into something, we would come up with a more neutral sounding recording. 
And I think that's pretty much the idea that they started with. And then in, in the doing of it, they also can compress the music so that streaming services can send high resolution data without um, too much bandwidth, because bandwidth is expensive, it, and it truly is. So all that said, there are, yeah, I mean, big surprise, there are multiple camps. <laughs> There's people like my buddy, Robert Harley, who absolutely adores MQA. And then in another camp, there's me. Um, I don't adore it. I, I think it does something funny to the music and the imaging that I don't like. So there you go. You're going to have to find out for yourself. <laughs> I'm right. He's wrong. Yeah, it doesn't happen like that. So it does change the way music sounds. That I think we can all agree on, whether it is changing it in a way that you like, something you're just going to have to try. If you need more information, give us a call, 800 PS Audio. If not, um, uh, do a little bit of reading. Uh, Robert had a whole, a whole series of articles in the, the Absolute Sound on it, and he explains it far better than I, in much more accurate detail. But that's what it is. Okay, thanks for the question. Talk to you later.